Keith, thank you for joining us here live on this Tuesday on the early line. Last time you were on TEL, it was Friday morning ahead of round number two at Valhalla Golf Club, live from Valhalla to try to tell us what was happening with the situation on the scene following the arrest of Scotty Scheffler. A little bit calmer on this Tuesday, I would imagine. I tell you, um, I, you know, I've been to going to golf events for many, many years and covering them live, and I have never witnessed anything in a media center much like what was happening on Friday. The anxiousness, the storylines, the rumors, the, everything, the electricity of that room and that of the atmosphere and the vibe on the golf course with Scotty going around and the chance for him free Scotty. Um, it was pretty amazing stuff and some unbelievable theater, no doubt. It was a wild weekend, to say the least, at Valhalla. But as we focus on the golf in the final round, it was Xander Shoffley prevailing over a field where everybody was going low in Louisville. Xander Shoffley, Keith, has had a world of talent for as long as he has been on the PGA Tour. A gold medal winner in Olympic golf, but that major title had eluded him in any of the four majors, finishing top 10 in each of the four entering this week at the 2024 PGA Championship. But when all was said and done, a birdie putt on his 72nd hole of the week goes around but then down as Xander Shoffley is a major champion for the first time. How did he change the narrative around his game to ultimately end up the champion of the PGA Championship at Valhalla? Uh, Going into Valhalla, I I mean, I was giving Xander zero credit, and I walk away giving him all the credit in the world, listening to his post-round or, you know, post-tournament press conference on Sunday, he still remained so composed. And and obviously he was very emotional at that moment and very relieved that he finally got over that hurdle in his career. But here's a guy with all the controversy that's been swirling around golf and how much of a beating he takes from the media week after week after week and not being able to close for the last two years. I mean, his last win was July of 2022. For him to do it, in such heroic fashion, knowing he needed birdie on the last hole, having to take that baseball swing stance, getting the ball up there, and then getting up and down. I mean, it's been a long time since we've had a major end on the final putt. I mean, it's been over two years. So for for Valhalla, the PGA of America, and Xander to all close in such fashion, it was just unbelievable theater. And, uh, you know, I can't say enough good things about Xander in this moment. It was fantastic to watch in real time as well. You take a look at starting the back nine where maybe the easiest hole in the golf course, a par five, he bogeys that and loses the lead, then still able to gain his composure back. And also, Keith, to your point, sometimes moving forward, he he could have won this, let's just say, by five strokes. Walking up 18, it feels great. I love the fact that he's been known to not be able to close the door but needed the birdie on 18 to secure that victory with a clutch putt that rolled around. I think that helps him out in the future. But... As we take a look at the future of golf, maybe it is Scotty Scheffler who shot 67 round number one, 66 after being arrested, and maybe the adrenaline sort of got away with him on Saturday, but Sunday, right back in the form at a 65. It's almost a shame because if he would have had a very good round, at least a decent round, around round number three, who knows what we would have saw on Sunday. Talk to us about Scotty Scheffler, how he encapsulated this entire week at the PGA and still able to perform and get a top 10. Well, I tell you what, it is a great microcosm for all that's going on in golf. I mean, all the disruption that we've faced for the last two years was kind of the way Scotty led his week. I mean, here's a guy who is by far the best player in the world, and he showed it. And maybe Ted Scott has tons of job security because part of the storyline <laughs> was that his caddy had to leave on Saturday, and he had permission ahead of time, and it was known, well known in Scotty's camp that Ted was going to his, high, his daughter's high school graduation. But, boy, did he need help on Saturday keeping it all together after that adrenaline rush, like, completely, you know, challenged him after the big dump on Friday night, you know, when he was just like, oh, geez, you know, like, what just happened to me? And then he comes back Saturday needing to compete again. He probably really needed Ted Scott on his bag. But overall, I mean, this is just a sign of the times in golf. This guy is an amazing talent. And at the end of the day, we had roughly, I don't know, five, six, seven policemen on a Friday morning that couldn't recognize him and put him in a and put him in a cop car and sent him to jail. I mean, what what are we doing? Like, like that, that's unbelievable to me. It, it kind of just shows to me that like all the, the stuff that we've been dealing with in golf, these the talent is still there. 
and we need to celebrate the golfers more. You know, everyone's being critical of, oh, the way the golf, Xander was 21 under. How about that Xander shot 21 under? How about that Bryson yeah. birdied the last hole to, to force a you know playoff? How about Victor Hovland and Colin Morikawa, these young stars coming back? I mean, how about all of these different storylines that are so positive, and yet we don't even know who the number one golfer in the world is in Louisville? I mean, like, this just blows my mind. I mean, there are so many positives in the golf world of which I've been a part of forever. I mean, Bryson walked around that place like Arnold Palmer. I mean, he was the people's champion. It was so cool. Yeah. And yet we can't come together. I mean, at the end of the day, the best way I can answer your question, Donnie, is to say that Scotty Scheffler is without a doubt the best golfer in the world. He showed that this weekend. But there's a lot of other guys out there that are working really hard to try to catch him. And we're going to have some unbelievable theater this year when they come together. It was an absolutely star-studded and stacked leaderboard in the final nine of a final round of a major championship. Bryson pushing Xander Shoffley, Victor Hovland making a charge, Colin Morikawa finally recording a birdie on his 72nd hole, his 18th of Sunday. So quickly here, Keith, a quick early look at the next major championship on the docket in about a month in the middle of June in North Carolina. Pinehurst number two for the 2024 U.S. Open. I think the theater that we saw on Sunday set the, sets the stage for the U.S. Open. What say you? Oh, there's no doubt about that. These guys have now officially understood that these four events have, if they thought they were a big deal going in, they have, they're, they're 10x that now. And the, the golf world can't wait for it enough. I mean, it, the anticipation, the crowds on Sunday. I walked with Victor and Bryson. Unbelievable. I can't wait to talk and get into Colonial even next week. It'd be good. <laughs>